Have you ever been spending a ton of time on a certain drawing and you decide that you want to draw one side of the face before you do anything else? And it comes out really, really cool. Let's give that as an example. Spent hours refining it, making sure that it's perfect. You painstakingly went in and added all this cool detail, try to get everything right. But then you go and you draw the other side and it doesn't quite match. We're going to learn how to avoid that in this video. Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today we are going to Gives, I'm going to give you guys some hints and some tips on how to avoid getting situations like this where you have one side of the face that's really cool and really detailed and you spent hours on doing it and then you go and draw the other side and it doesn't quite look the same. But I'm going to give you also some tips, tricks, and little things that I've picked up along the way when it comes down to just drawing the structure of heads. Um, ooh! One thing though, before we keep on started, like before we get started, I want to make a little announcement. Um, I have a brand new channel. And if you guys have not yet checked it out, for all of you that speak Spanish and have asked me forever to make a video, in like videos in Spanish because I seem to have a lot of fans that live in Mexico and South America and Central America. So I went ahead and made a channel in Spanish. It's called Arte con Rodgon and it is linked right here. Hopefully that worked, or just follow the, just put this in the search words and it should pop up. But it is going to be a channel. I might not be uploading uh, videos every week, but I will definitely at least upload one every month in Spanish and just for all of you guys out there that follow me from Latin America. Whee! But now that we got that little self-promotion out of the way, let's get started. Okay, okay. So, I've learned tons of different ways to build a head. And it always, like, let's go by the steps of progression where I learned. And then you guys can gauge roughly which level you're at and then I'll give little hints and tips that will help you progress from that stage if you find yourself in that stage. So first steps first, right? They always tell you to start with a sphere. 99% of all drawing things tutorials start like that and let's just say that the first step you ever did was just draw a little happy face. And that fits into the circle. And that's step number one. The most basic head that you can possibly have. Well, from this point on, maybe you learn that heads are a little bit more oval. Right? So you drew little eggs instead of circles. And then, you know, you would put the eyes somewhere inside no real like there wouldn't be a measure of anatomy or proportions it's more so just drawing for drawing sake so you'd have fun drawings but they wouldn't have much structure they would just be kind of your basic head that you would be able to draw maybe not even this much no, nah, that, maybe that's a little too much detail. Maybe it's more like this. That would be like step two right there. 
And let's avoid drawing necks and stuff like that for right now. We'll just stick to the study of the heads. Okay, maybe at this point you start seeing that other artists are drawing uh, a little bit cooler eyes. So you start, you know, thinking, how can I draw those cool eyes? This is where a lot of people look at manga, comics, or editorial cartoons like Calvin and Hobbes, Garfield, stuff like that. And let's say that this is before anybody really discovers Pinterest or something you know, or anything like that that it could be like an endless resource for things. Then I'm just talking about like what people are attracted to and that's more so how we're gonna focus on that too. So at this point they start drawing like you know stylized eyes in some way or another. Be it manga and they just like they don't really understand what the elements are that they're putting on they just kind of replicate what they see so it lacks any knowledge as to how to make things look proper but people try and at this point in time they're not really focusing on anatomy or structure or anything of the sort they're literally just drawing what they see on TV. They always have the poofy hair, right? There you go. <laughs> so that would be kind of like a rendition of somebody that would like start doing it like that. In this same contrast, you can go the other route and the people that try to draw comic book art but they still don't know really how to position anything so things just look a little off now maybe the neck is like out of position or the ear is like far off but this one like following comics gives you a uh, more solid ground as to what a character is supposed to have. Maybe you just don't get it completely because you're just replicating what other people know and the shortcuts they're taking. But this would be another same take on this. And I call this uh, the fanboy stage. Slash girl. Slash girl. Stage. Okay. Depending on where you think that you are, at this point, it kind of could branch off in two different directions. But generally, for somebody that's looking to get better, at this point, that's when they start looking at other people's artwork. And they start looking at how to draw books, how to draw manga, draw stuff. So at this point in stage, they start seeing different approaches to things they start being told to well let's, let's, let's take it to the super basics at this stage people are told to just start with the sphere break the face down in halves and then to draw a triangle shape for the bottom of the jaw at this point they don't know why they're drawing this. Most people don't realize the reason that this angle is right here or why the eye, like the eye line is right there. They'll identify why this one splits everything in the middle, but they don't really understand other things. And I'm talking from self-reflection. It was really hard to understand exactly what they meant by drawing a triangle. And yes, it sounds ridiculous, it sounds so dumb that somebody can't just be like, oh, well, that's the jawline, duh. But that's not really the case. When you're really trying to like understand it, especially from my point of view, that I had no art background. None at all. I had no art background whatsoever. So 
I didn't really understand it. Like it just didn't click. And I'm going to say that word a lot, click, because it's something that happens at every single one of these stages. At this stage, what clicked is that your head is a little bit more oval. Maybe you have a nose instead of no nose. And this one, what clicks is that you can make it look really cool. It doesn't have to be restricted to what you could draw. You can just copy somebody else's work and then make it look better. And then something clicks and then you start understanding little tiny portions of these things. Maybe like they help you like break down the measurements of the face, right? Like, you know, like the whole one eye in between each eye. And then that's where you put your eyes. And then you put the eyebrows a little bit above the eyes. And then you put the nose and then you put the mouth. So you start learning all those little steps. So at this point, it's the uh, amateur artist on road to being pro. To pro. <laughs> okay. So they start learning everything by the books. So things aren't very creative. They're not very, you know, at this point, if you actually didn't skip like a couple turns, if you went from this and you try to avoid learning the lessons and you went on to just refining what you do, you're going to be good at what you do, but you're not going to be very versatile. So this is step three, this is step four. Let's see, next step. This is uh, the step that I'd say most people that you guys are looking up to are either here or the step after that. This is when people start understanding the basic anatomy underneath the faces. So they still use all the tools that they used before. But at this point, they start understanding that maybe underneath this, there is a different structure, right? They start seeing things for what's underneath and realizing why certain things fall into certain places. You can look at simplified, you know, schools to make simple cartoons. But at this point, you can take this knowledge that you're learning and then you're piecing together and then apply that to your drawing. And you're doing this subconsciously, really. You're not really thinking about it. You start picking things up a little by little. Let's say this is the brow line. This is where the nose is going to be because the skull has it right there. Within this area, you have to draw the eyes because that's where the eye sockets are. Eyebrow. And then you, at this point, you start analyzing all the body, not necessarily just the elements that are, you know, apparent. Um, this is where most people don't reach. This is because people stop right here. People stop when they understand the basics. And they'll just start growing, but they'll grow a lot slower than if somebody that keeps on studying and understanding why. For example, cheekbones, right? It's a muscle that's right here, it gets pushed up, boom, it creates the wrinkles around the eyes. But that's not that, <laughs> this is, uh, that's, that would be the next step. So at this point, you have like your own template that you made for your faces, and you can start adding a lot of detail cheekbones, stuff like that. So if we get rid of that, we have a pretty cool face.
So that would be step number five. Most people are stuck in between these two. People that are going to art school, that went to art school, or that are just trying to learn on their own, most people find themselves within these two areas. Most people don't really push to the next level. Okay, we'll draw the next level here, level six. This now is when you start breaking it down even more. But at this point, you start trying to stylize it to make it look original, to make it look fun, to make it look entertaining for other people because at this point you're probably more on gear to being an artist as a career. So you start breaking things down, maybe you start adding, you know, like, since you already understand what you're drawing, you can start adding cool elements to things that, you know, maybe aren't even there in real life. Maybe horns. You understand the basic structures of a face. So you start seeing things in 3D and with style in mind. And you can start doing this because you already have the knowledge that impedes you from drawing something exactly how you want it. So you can draw whatever you want and you can start putting a little bit of touches of your own stylization of things that you've seen somewhere else things that you actually like from other artists, a lot of that goes into the eyes. And, you know, the way that you, like, make your faces also. Uh, there's people that draw really sharp angles and everything looks very geometric. There's other people that just like super soft features. So they play a lot with smoother, softer lines. You know, it, the possibilities are endless. And the whole point of all this progression is to be able to get to this. You want to be able to conceptualize all the stuff that's in your head without any restriction because you don't understand the style. If you can figure out how to start seeing things for one, like for the basic shapes that they are in general and understanding things beneath them and you start seeing things in three dimensions and you stop seeing things as oversimplified versions of themselves, that's when you start growing. It's really hard to break out of habit. It's incredibly hard to do that, especially if you think that your artwork is at a certain level already. What you need to do is maybe for a split second, maybe for a couple days, couple, like try to draw things differently. Try to go on Pinterest, try to go on to any tutorial that you can find and slowly start trying to pick up different habits. See, I'm trying to look at my hand so I can draw his hand. But yeah, like once you start seeing how other people draw it and you're not like limiting yourself by telling yourself like, oh, I already know this. 
That's the biggest mistake you can possibly do. Telling yourself that you already know everything and that you know exactly how things are supposed to be. Trust me, you can always get better. You can always learn something new. And, you know, I'm giving you guys, you know, this little step-by-step -step thing so you guys can understand roughly where you're supposed to be. From here to here, it comes natural. From here to here, it depends on what you like. That's going to determine where you're going to take it the next step up. From that point on, it's up to you guys to try to get within this parameter. Trying to get into a point where you're trying to understand what's going on. You're trying to understand everything that makes up what you draw. Right now, I'm just talking about heads, but the same thing applies to the rest of the body. The same thing applies to animals. The same thing applies to plants, water, sun, light, shadows, everything. If you understand how and why it's made, you're not going to be able to be stopped. You're going to be able to draw anything and anything, everything you want without the limitation of having to, you know, well, figure out how to draw it or how somebody else stylized it so you can do it. No, once you understand the basic structure of it, it's really easy. Uh, let's take some eyes, for example. Let's just start with... Uh, let's draw a couple different ones. You know, a normal realistic-ish eye would look something along these lines. All my stuff is cartoony, so this is realistic-ish in my eyes. As in it has the basic structure of a real eye. Okay? Depending on the level of makeup, you know, stuff like that. And then you have your eye. You have the little black part. And then you have some color. And then you add a highlight. Boom. This would be... Yeah, I don't like that highlight that looks kind of... Okay, that's a lot better. Then you have a basic normal eye. Consists of a couple of things. The eyeball, which is the sphere that's behind it. Let's say it would be like that. Then you have the eyelids. They overlap the eye, but they still retain shapes from it. It's just like it's hugging it. So, and then you have the lower lid that does exactly the same thing. It goes around the eyeball. And then you have little tiny shapes like the tear ducts. But having this circle and everything wrapped around it is the basic premise of an eye. So when you take that and you just start stylizing it, uh, let's say you want to do like demon eyes. See, you can start with the same basic look and start adding lines. Maybe a higher contrast because you want it to look evil. Maybe this one has like, you know, but that's the same premise, different styling. Or you can just go with something as super cute as super simple and super cute. Same basic principles. You have your eyeball, eyelids. 
and you can adjust that to highlights if you want. Super sparkly. Right, so whatever you do, try to get to here. Um, I recommend picking up some books. I recommend learning, you know, like some anatomy from it. Um, try to just research as much as you can about how other people see things. And don't try to just um, focus on one. Don't try to just learn how to draw in one way. Try to draw in all the different ways. All of them. That way, whenever you find one that makes sense to you, it's easier for you to go like, ha-ha, it makes sense now. And then you can approach differently. And maybe then you can go back to the previous versions of things that people explained, and maybe they'll make sense now. I'm going to give you guys an example of how I like to do them, personally. And, you know, you guys can, from that point on, uh, make your own like assumption as if it works for you or not. If it doesn't, you know, there's a ton of different ways to do it. I'll be more than happy to point you guys in a couple directions of artists that I really like. But for me, this is how it works. If I'm drawing, let's say a face, a profile face. First, I start with the width of how the, like, the person's going to be. Let's just make this one like a super basic head. It's more like a little oval shape that's like a little squarish. Okay? From that point on, I'm going to determine where the jaws are going to jaw is going to go. I just draw a little line and it ends up being like a little triangle roughly to the middle of the head. This is where the ear is going to go. The ear normally sits from the middle like right here on the back part of the middle or anywhere farther back that because the back of your head is not that wide it doesn't come out so much so if you see that you the middle is a little bit too close it's always a safe assumption that you can just move it back a little bit okay but that these are just guidelines these are not templates i if i had to follow this line exactly it would limit me a lot. More so, I'm just putting them there as guidelines to roughly where things are supposed to go. And then from that point on, I make my choice of where to go from there. So let's just make like the ear be around there. Uh, I know that the eye sockets are going to play a very important role when it comes down to this. And I don't like having to wait until I did everything else to be able to draw them. If I don't like the positioning of them from the get-go, I'll just redraw it because that's the most important part of the face. To me, the eyes are everything when it comes down to a drawing. So, in this case, I just draw like a little ninja mask. Just nice and straight. Right? And now I know that the eyes should be around that area. When it comes down to actually drawing it, this line will indicate to me where the cheekbone is and where the eye socket goes. So that's the limitations of where the eye can go. If you have really deep set eyes, they'll be drawn behind the line. And then with really big eyebrow, like, you know. But I'll we'll get to that in a second. We're just drawing a normal, regular person. This can also be moved up and down. Let's just make really quick ones right here. You can move it up. You can move it down. And there's, I, I'm, I don't like to be like, you know, like mm, limited by the whole splitting everything in halves and doing everything in between. No, because you can just draw a really cool face from this just as much as you can from this. Variation is awesome, and you guys will see why. Okay, so we have this. We have our little ninja masks that will determine where the eyes are going to be limited to. From that point on, from the bottom of this little mask, you can extend it. And I'm going to show you guys how I, starting off with the same thing, you can come up with cool angles and stuff like that. Okay. 
extend it a little bit and that's going to be roughly where the nose is going to go. Doesn't have to connect anywhere, it just has to be, you just have to know like roughly where the nose is going to go. From that point on you can go down. This is where the mouth would go. But let's even make it simpler. Let's just just make a line. Okay, this one might be looking up. Let's uh, do it like that. And then this one might be different. Okay. Right now, it kind of looks like a Cyclops, right? So that's kind of what we want. From that point on, we already established everything that we need. We can go in and start rendering the drawing. In this case, let's move the uh, year a little bit back. Years don't have to be limited to uh, the anatomical restrictions that everybody sets. If you know that it's supposed to be between the eyebrows and the nose, congratulations, that's a real good estimate of to where it is. But, you know, it doesn't always apply. So you can use it as a, as a starting off point, but then just start, you know, playing around and seeing like what works best for the style that you want to achieve. So we have that ear. Let's define a little bit more of the shape of the face. So what I like about this is that within that same little like box shape, you can just cut it in and you have your brow line where your eyebrow would go. You can just follow that. It gives you the nose bridge. And then you can just go into the mouth. And the chin. Remember that the chin and the lips go, there's like a little tiny, tiny ball right here. So the lip goes in and then this goes back out. And that's like the good flow that you can do within your lines. Okay, let's move on to the eyes. The eyes from the side are still a sphere, right? They're still within this eye socket. And then from here, you go around. Let's not make them squinting. <laughs> You follow that same sphere and it gives you the little parts of the face that should have shadows. You can do this, then with this, this is also a little tip that took me a while to catch up on because mostly I, drawing the bottom of the neck was always a pain in the ass for me. Um, this one's head's a little bit too wide. Bring it in a little bit. Okay, the neck. You can start off with just a cylinder. But the cylinder, where does it have to start? Where does it end? How does it make it look better? Okay, it should be from a little bit behind the ear and a little bit behind the, the jaw. That's roughly where you got to put it. The front of the neck is tricky because if you just draw it like this, it'll look fine. It'll look fine until you realize that it could look better. You take this line, you don't connect it to the chin, and then you bring this little tiny section Boom. You don't mark it with a heavy line. You kind of just shade it in. And your faces will instantly look so much better. This is also a sphere, so the eye would be more like that. You can also, you know, go like super realistic and, you know, do the eye shape like that. But this is more like how I style it. I like working with softer shapes. 
And then from that point on, you can set the hairlines. And let's just keep it with short hair for now. But that would be an example of something you can draw. Then you can take that same concept and apply it to tons of different things. Maybe this elf has, maybe this is an orc. So instead of the pointy nose down, you make a fatter nose. But using that same template to know exactly where everything's going to go. See, if you keep everything, you can draw whatever you feel like, at least with faces. It's going to take a while, and it's not going to be like something that you learn immediately, and it's going to like click right away, but it's something worth working towards. See, super simple way to just make like a dynamic, fun-looking face. Uh, how about this one? Let's see. Hmm. How can we challenge this? How how do we push this to another like extreme? Okay, we'll make it look up. Okay, so we have that same concept. I would honestly start with something like this, and just changing a little bit of the angles, so you can make it look like it's looking up which would involve a little bit more of the view from underneath the neck. Maybe the mouth is shaped a little bit higher up. Maybe the cheeks block a little bit of the eye. And But you have that line right there, so it, it's not hard to just plan around it. And for this one, Let's see. For this one, let's make the nose super right button. But then it doesn't match the mouth, so you can just you can just change it. just another fun way to be able to create things that you might not have like known before uh, you can take the same concept and put it to the front so we have the same thing we start with the basic shape we add where the, the jaw is roughly going to be add a middle line and then we draw our ninja mask. In this case, let's draw something. Well, let's let's throw it off a little. Let's make something super goofy. Just let's keep it straight for now. Okay. So we have where our eyes are gonna go. And since we don't have that follow-up when it comes down to well, how we had it in the profile, in the profile we could just follow the mask. And then it kind of gives us like a nose shape, right? Uh, in the side view, it really, I just like to do little diamonds. So if the diamond is going to be like that, that's going to be roughly what the size of the nose is going to be. Let's make a super wide one and see where it takes us. Okay, we have that. And then we have the mouth area as well. Remember, we're starting to try to find things to like be a little bit more complex. So we're not just going to, you know, stylize it. We're going to try to identify the parts of the, the face and then from that point on, build our character. So we have our little triangle or diamond for the nose. We have a little ball for the chin. So the in between are the lips. I like to draw a line from the edge of the nose to the side of the chin. And that's those little cheek lines that you end up getting. 
when you laugh, when you smile, and then these are gonna be like little rubber bands. If your mouth goes up, these go up, right? If your smile goes down, these tend to be down as well. You can play with two different sides. And then your characters are gonna have a little bit more fun to them. So these are little rubber bands that hang from the middle of the, from the edges of the nose to the edges of the chin. And then from here, let's just draw something with two uneven eyes. Right? He has a really wide nose. So maybe he has large nostrils. And the diamond also gives you a very easy approach to shading if you need to. Remember, you would learn that these are spheres so you can add lines above them knowing that it's the eyelid that's wrapping around the eyeball. So at this point, we're going to give this guy like a super crazy smile. We're going to just push it. It's like past the cheek line. It's digging into the cheeks. And even though I'm stylizing it, remember that I'm still staying within the parameters of like what a real face would be. Uh, you can have little tiny circles for your cheeks. And since this rubber band is pushing up, these would push up as well. And since the mouth is going down, then the side jaw lines would also get thinner because the skin is getting pushed that way. Let's just draw some basic teeth. And then from this point on, you can continue on to drawing the rest of the character. You can maybe give him some ears, some crazy eyebrows maybe. And since I'm bald, I tend to draw a lot of people bald. So he'll have just a few hairs here and there. Okay, just super simple. And we just came up with a very interesting character that's more complex than something that normally would be drawn. Okay, so let's see. Okay, one thing that I want to explain to you guys, especially with the basic concepts that we went over the first time, like here. If you have to take anything from this lesson today, you will realize, here, let me just, that the progression is very easy to see. And let's just go with the red one. What happens from here to here, from here to here, and especially from here to here, is that you start seeing things in more complex shapes. The more complex the shape that your head can understand, let's just begin with like a basic face, right? So, at this point we know that spheres, maybe a little rectangle for a nose, a little line for the lips, maybe a little like stuff like this. What takes this from this to something that you can draw super quick, as just as quick, What differentiates one from the other 
It's just understanding more complex shapes. Understanding that your face is not a simple box and it's not a simple rectangle or configuration of cylinders or overlapping circles or stuff like that. It's understanding that you're made out of bones that have complex like shapes to them. And when you learn to draw those complex shapes, that's when your stuff starts looking great. So from here to here, it's the world of difference. It took me maybe 10 more seconds to draw, but the level of detail is infinitely better. So what you got to do is you have to start seeing things again uh, for what they are. Like take all the lessons that you learn from other things and just listen to them, learn them, but don't be locked down by them. What's going to help you get better is understanding the little tiny things that are underneath your face. Even if it's in a very simplified way, you will get immensely better if you are able to see things how they actually are in real life. And then you can stylize, once you realize how to do that, you can stylize anything and everything in whatever shape way you want. Uh, at that point, it becomes really easy. So, aim for this. Aim for these steps. Five and four. If you find yourself in one of these two areas, you don't skip from here to here really easily. Try to find the styling of something that you want to do, and then start learning that. This could be a very small step. It could be a stepping stone. And the problem is that a lot of people stay here and they just don't want to learn anymore after that. So go here. Learn how to learn. Remember how to actually like put time and effort into learning something that you might not know completely. And you'll get to once you get to this point, there's no stopping the that, like taking it to the next level. There's nothing. You'll just be like night and day, overnight. Trust me. It's happening to me all the time with new things that I like to get into. And having the knowledge that I have from before go on to this going on to the next thing. Oh man, it's like it's so cool. And I recommend it to everybody. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. One more little thing, and it's a little self-promotion, but you know, feel free to click on the next videos and stuff like that. I just restructured my Patreon, and I am offering a total of five mentorship spots that will consist of me keeping track of your progress month to month on a weekly basis. And that will be me mentoring and guiding you guys and providing as much of my knowledge as you guys can absorb. And as I go along, I make sure that I review and I give you guys good feedback and I try to help you guys out when it comes down to getting to the next level. You know, I want to be able to help a few people and I want to test this out before I release it to the more general public. So, I believe two of the spots have been claimed for next month. I'm only gonna do five. And for those people that do sign up, just go to my Patreon, check it out. If it's something that you guys enjoy, you guys think that you guys get a little bit of use from, hey, sign up. If not, if you guys can support, there is a $1 tier option that will have some, you know, really fun stuff. And there's the basic $5 option that will provide you guys with a little bit more exclusivity when it comes down to some content 
and it's also a perfect way to support what I do and hopefully one day be able to do it full time. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned a little bit. I know that it wasn't like a straight up tutorial, it was more so like a little informational thing, but hope you guys enjoyed it anyways. There's some more videos up here if you guys feel the need to learn some more or you just want to hear my ugly voice some more. That's perfectly fine, click on them and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.